Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Mouth Seizures from a Complete Lunatic, where my opinions are made up and my dignity doesn't matter. Today, I wanted to come with you guys, come to you guys, not come with you guys, because I'm not going anywhere, and speak to you a little bit on more of a serious note, which I know, weird, but it's something that I think that it's important that I take a step back as I'm growing as an author, and I'm hoping that some of you guys are growing as well, that we can look back and appreciate of what does it mean to you to be an author. Growing up, I always looked at being an author as, you know, they were, they were kind of like superstars to me, you know. You take TV shows and that stuff aside because I know I'm not the oldest guy around by any means, you know. My boobs are still at a respectable height, and... Uh, Things haven't started to droop to an unsanitary level yet, so I'm okay, you know. Cut me open, you might find 27 rings. We'll go with that. So, this is before television and movies. I always had a, a large respect for authors and what that meant to be an author. You, you create something from nothing. Everything comes from up here. Now, I do not have children, so I know some of you folks are out there like, Oh, what about making kids? Absolutely, 100%. I don't have any kids, so this is all I got. Don't take it from me. I'll punch you in the neck. So, as a kid, a dream of mine was always to become a published author. And I've had little poems published here and there. But, you know, I've never had that rock star moment of, I just had a novel picked up and published. So, of course, that's a dream of mine. Being an indie author is completely respectable. 100%. And I would be completely happy with being an indie author. As a matter of fact, I was developing myself into, you know what? I think I can do this by myself. But I come to you today with an agenda. And I know you're thinking that's a little bit weird. But you know what? It's just like first dates. Sometimes the guy's got something cooking in the back of here that might be too creepy to bring up, you know, up front. So I'm going to do it now, though, because I'm going to put all my cards out on the table. Excuse me. And no, that wasn't a product plug either. That's just the only cup I had with tea in it. So... I was recently approached by a company, and the research that I've been doing says, shows that a lot of folks might have been approached by similar companies, companies that people are calling vanity publishers. That basically is, is it's publishing for vanity. You're, you're paying them essentially to pick up your book. Now, I'm not saying that the company that approached me was a vanity author by any means necessary. However, I was approached by a publishing company that said, you know what? We would love to put your book out there. We're going to submit it to Barnes & Noble. We're going to take care of your paperback and hardback distributions. We're going to sign you your own editor and gravy training with biscuit wheels. Fantastic. But my point is, is when do you get to that point to where you have to step back and say, is this the right time for me? Is this the right thing for me to do? And it's nerve-wracking because when will you ever know if you're making the right decision? whether you're going to indie publish or go with a small publishing company, which is who approached me, or some giant conglomerate. I always kind of have that feeling of, you know, someday I'll be an accomplished author. And I'll say, oh, yeah, when they signed me on, they agreed to pay me X amount. And some veteran author is going to be like, really? Rookie mistake. That's the dumbest thing. That's the low ball they come out of the gate with. You should have never accepted that. So I, I kind of always worry about ending up with egg on my face a little bit. But what I want to reach out to my fellow bloggers and readers and just authors or people that love authors, you know, if you're the wife or husband of an author, sweet. If you're a publisher, fantastic as well, because maybe you'll be able to answer some of these questions for some folks out here. So my question is, is what should you look for when you're publishing? You know, if you have a company that is new and is just starting, only been around a couple of years... I live in Maine, and Maine's all about giving the little guy a chance with companies. It's all about eat local, grow local, shop local. They love small businesses here. So I kind of have that mindset with it, but I'm being very cautious with that as well because you can that can bite you in the butt big time. You know, you ask people like, you know, Kevin Bacon about Bernie Madoff, and he might start twitching a little bit. Bad stuff can happen if you don't know what you're doing. So, the punchline of what I'm trying to get out of this is, if you can hear this, if you are within the sound of my voice, first off, I know what you're thinking. Beautiful voice, beautiful face. Who is this guy? We're going to put that aside for a moment here. Focus. My eyes are up here. Okay. 
Have you had a, a publishing horror story? You know, you were, you were a, a, a rookie writer or something of that sort, and you submitted your work to some, you know, mail your book and all of your rights to this location, and we promise we'll get back to you. The next thing you know, The Hunger Games has become, you know, a movie and a book, and you're like, son of, I wrote that in 92. No offense to The Hunger Games. I know there's probably an angry email coming for that one. But do you have any publishing horror stories? Are there companies out there that you think that you should absolutely warn people about on my blog? Because I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but a lot of people do read through these. A lot of people read through websites like this. So I urge you, if you've heard anything about it, respond in the comments. Like my video, share it, kind of get the word out there, and respond. And tell people, hey, this place is great. They give new people a shot. This place, mm -mm. you know, bad news bears. Negative Ghost Rider. Don't do it. Uh, so yeah, I think that that's, that's kind of the punchline that I wanted to get out today. I'm sorry, it's a little serious. Uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta take that step back and kind of get that word out there, though. I appreciate you listening to my ramblings once again. It's been nice talking to you. In this case, to me, because I'm looking at a screen and there's a big box with my face in it talking back at me. So, you know... Thank you, me, for listening. You always listen to me. And you guys take care. Enjoy writing. And I'll be making one another video here soon with a little bit more funny in it. And again, share those horror stories or those dreamer stories. You know, you got the failures and the successes. I want to hear it all. What do you got for me? All right, guys. All right. It was nice talking again. Again, Zachary Chopchinsky. Thank you for visiting my blog. Check out my book. And you guys take care. Have a good one. Bye.